Hey guys, what's up? Good morning. It's your boy Shanus, and as you can tell, we are in the rain, but business as usual. So while still being safe and doing the whole social isolation thing, um, I woke up a little early on a rainy day because in San Diego, our weather is just being really wacky to go ahead and release this video out. Um, just some minor edits. But first and foremost, I just, you know, like everybody else, I know it's a major deal, the whole COVID-19 situation. Um, I actually just wanna thank you guys that are obviously doing your part, and a huge shout out to anybody who is considered an essential worker, especially those of you guys that are on the front lines in grocery stores, in healthcare, hospitals, things of that sort. Thank you so much. Your valor and the risk that you guys are taking does not go unnoticed, but believe me, I know how crazy and chaotic it is. With that out of the way, let's get back into business. And under the hood of the car, just to show you one glimpse, uh, this next part was pre-recorded. Um, I don't wanna re-record it in the rain, but uh, the explanation goes as such. So first things first, you're gonna go underneath the hood of your car and you're gonna want a voltmeter. Uh, you absolutely need one. They're pretty cheap. I think I see them for like 15 to $20, um, like at AutoZone or whatnot, but this is gonna give you the most accurate reading. There's a few cheap ways to kind of know what's going on. So the first thing is, I'm gonna list them right now on the screen. But typically, things to note is these all cars, most cars, um, are running on a 12 volt battery system. Stock battery will even tell you, 12 volts. So, generally speaking, the battery to be fully charged, as you can guess, should be at 12 volts. Actually, that's a little off. Usually, it's anywhere between 12.4 to 12.55, like as you're gonna see right now. When the car is on and the alternator being healthy, not always, but the alternator being healthy and the battery being healthy, the voltage should spike up to about the same, but by two. So 14.45, 14.55 will demonstrate a healthy battery. There, um, and a charging system, essentially. Um, if it doesn't show that, then you can have a faulty alternator or even a battery. But if you know cars, there's one rule that I will tell you is that when one thing fails, unfortunately, usually two or three other things fail. It's just a weird habit. Um, lastly, I'll show you a way to see if your battery is just in horrible health. Um, because sometimes batteries can lie, they might show that they're holding a charge, and then when you put a load on them, they start immediately depleting right away. So again, these are all indicators and little cheap tricks to kind of check. Fortunately, most auto parts stores have ways to check uh, your actual battery by doing a stress test. And some of them have similar functionality on trying to test an alternator. There's no 100% sure way, but again, these are key signs that will definitely help you figure that out. Big disclaimer, um, by making this video, I found out that my voltmeter is no longer doing its job. It was giving me readings below where they should be on three separate cars, all of which have healthy batteries, one of which had a new battery. You should get a healthy reading for a healthy battery. Should be around 12 volts to 12.5. Um, 12.5, usually you would get something like that if you had just ran the car, if you just turned off the car from running it. Um, and obviously for newer batteries. Um, you would get lower to the 12s um, when you've had the battery for a while. Doesn't mean it's bad, it's just obviously slowly degrading, so that's what a healthy reading should be. If the car is on when you're doing this test, you should easily get a 14 to 14.5 volts. Once again, just denoting that you have your charging system on. Now, I'm saying that you should get that reading when it's on based off the fact that the car is not going anywhere and you are just idling and I'll touch base on that a little bit later down the road. But that's the reading you should get. Now, if the car is off and you're trying to see if your battery is still good and holding a charge, one of the easiest ways is to just start putting loads onto the car. So what that means is turning on as many lights as you can, turn on your interior dome lights, put your key in the ignition and turn on your headlights, turn on your stereo, and basically what you'll see is if the battery is good, you'll see the tiniest of dips. So if you're getting a 12.4 reading, you'll probably see it go down to 12.3, maybe 12.2, depending on what it is that you put on. 
um, if the battery is starting to go bad, you'll see either that number diminish fast or really if it's bad, you'll probably see that volt number decrease really quickly and rapidly. So maybe it'll go to 12.2 and then you'll see 12.1, 12, 11.9, um, 11.8, 11 11.7 11 and so on. If it's really bad, then you will just see it completely drop from that 12 to like 11, 10, 9, 8 volts, which means that unfortunately the battery is no longer holding charge. If you start noticing it's trickling fast in numbers, like I mentioned prior, it means that the battery's ready to go out. And obviously if it just dumps really quick, then you probably want to replace it ASAP. And so here's one simple thing. A lot of people buy these things, right? USB uh, adapters for your vehicle. So this one's kind of neat because it has a little trick. We're gonna plug it in. And as you can see, it has a little tool. Now, sometimes they will be off, not entirely 100%. The car's on, so 14.1, again, would be technically a good reading. Now, I know you guys saw the other, the USB hub with the voltmeter, and that's really cool. Um, a very little discreet display, especially if you need extra USB ports. However, you know me, I like to find trinkets that might be very kind of uh, car oriented, and something that you guys might like. And I found this thing by a company called Drac. Um, I found it on Amazon, it was like 10 bucks, same thing. Um, and they come in like different color displays. It's more of a gauge. So I'm gonna show you, um, this little part that's hanging off is actually the little uh, temperature, uh, The well, you'll see. But it basically uh, measures your temperature inside the vehicle. I know there's one here but this one's basically the temperature outside. So if you wanna know the temperature inside, I know it sounds pointless, but I mainly got it for the uh, volt reading. So anyways, it's plugged in, let's turn on the car. And as you can see, immediately it starts working. So like I mentioned earlier, and I know that I thought the previous socket was messed up, um, you'll see that because we're idling, it's getting a 14.3 reading um, as far as what our charging system's doing. So this is really cool because these are really pretty much accurate because they take a direct reading from the charging system. Typically, the uh, output, uh, the 12 volt outputs uh, get a direct reading from the actual battery. So that's good news. Um, again, my car is three going on four years old. So getting a 14.3 reading is still very healthy. Um, not towards the 14.5, but again, uh, sometimes you don't want to be that high. Um, like I said, you'll rarely see that when you're brand new battery. So this is good. And then obviously the red is the uh, temperature on the inside, which like I said, it's raining today. So 59.7 makes sense. Um, but, but it's a really great indicator that our charging system is healthy and doing its job. Um, obviously if we see fluctuations or if that number starts dropping, um, that kind of gives us a warning. If the volt number actually exceeds 14.5, then we're actually uh, overcharging, which is also dangerous. So as much as you might think, oh, the higher the better, that's not the case. We do not wanna see a number that it's over 14.5 um, because I would be very concerned. Um, also, clearly, you don't wanna see a number underneath like a 12. Technically, if, if it's on, if the car's on, you kinda don't wanna go under 12 point, uh, five ish 12 uh, I'd say 12.2 we don't want to go underneath that um, 12 is still acceptable but we really don't want to go much lower than that because that would also tell us that our charging system something is wrong with it um, so I mentioned earlier about seeing a 14.3 at idle that's because when you're actually moving say you're going at a consistent speed on the freeway uh, there's a load on the car so you'll actually see this number drop from a 14.3 somewhere along the 12s um, for me, it seems that I kind of sit anywhere between 12.5 and 12.7, which um, is, is fine, once again, because we're under load. Maybe not an extreme load that it's a little higher than the uh, numbers I just stated. But this is just really good feedback for those of you guys that are suspecting um, you need a battery replacement or you want to know if maybe your alternator is going bad. You have one clear way of testing the battery, but you want to know if the charging system is doing its job and you'll clearly see it here because if this number 
starts changing, especially while you're driving, that means that there's more than likely something wrong with the actual charging uh, system itself, in this case, the alternator. Uh, the last thing before I sign off that I do want to also inform you guys is that if you see a good reading here, also please don't assume that your battery is doing a good job. Um, if the charging system is healthy, you will always get a proper reading in here um, and the battery will almost always lie to you and give you a false reading that it's holding a charge. Because I know I mentioned this, this number comes from typically the battery. However, when the battery is getting a, a good charge, a healthy charge, um, it will almost always give you the false reading that it's holding, but clearly what will happen is that when you actually turn off the car, so the alternator is no longer working, the charging system is no longer working, you'll discover really quickly that the, if the battery is bad um, under load, obviously like I mentioned before, you'll either see the number start to trickle down really fast, meaning that it's going bad, or you'll see the number just plummet which means that you probably want to change the battery ASAP. And like I said, as far as battery testing, you almost always, at least from home, you want to have a voltmeter, and those things sell pretty cheaply as well. Just make sure you get a decent quality. I wouldn't go for the cheapest of cheap. Um, if for whatever reason you don't have a voltmeter or you just don't want to buy one, um, you can go to your local auto parts store and almost all of these places have actual uh, battery testers. Um, and these are a little bit more inclusive because they will put a very hard load onto your battery to see if your battery could withstand it. Those tests, I would honestly take uh, sometimes with a grain of salt. The only reason why I state that is because you can have a battery that's on its way out but will still last you a good amount of time. And then if you take it to those places because it's not meeting the rigorous standards of that machine, you'll get it as a failure and they'll just tell you it's a bad battery, you need to replace it. So that's the reason why I kind of go with the voltmeter instead. It would just be a smarter idea to kind of check for yourself because like I said, while they're not wrong, you probably do want to change the battery. Again, their job is to sell and you probably might not need to change it right that moment, especially if you're not in a financial situation to do so. So it's always a good idea to check on your own and see if maybe you might have a few weeks, maybe you know, until payday, or if you get paid monthly, if you might be able to last the rest of the month on that battery until it really just goes out. And so, again, this is why I always recommend being able to check things on your own. As always, rough times, gotta stay indoors. So this is the one thing that I could think of releasing for you guys. Um, I do have a video uh, coming out next week uh, reviewing that one USB Nanda device. Uh, I found a slight little bug with it and I just kind of want to make sure that it is that particular item that's causing the problem so that way I can show you guys on camera and just debunk it once and for all. But as always guys, thanks for all the love and support. Uh, please, please, please be safe out there. If you don't need to be out, you know, I'm not your parents, but please stay at home and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Hey guys, real quick, while I'm still outside, something I forgot to mention in the video for keeping your car healthy is if you haven't turned on your car for a while because of the fact that you're being quarantined, being able to turn on your car and get it to operating temperature. So don't just take it down the street to 7-Eleven and have your temperature gauge go like a quarter way. Um, honestly, doing something like that damages your internals a little bit more than people know. Um, it's not catastrophic, but again, if you're just a super careful person, I'd recommend turning on your car um, to let, uh, one, the battery charge because just sitting there, it's gonna trickle on its own. And then two, um, just drive it around, get it to operating temperature. Uh, don't just stop once it gets to operating temperature. Don't just sit underneath your carport or in your garage and let the car idle until it gets to operating temperature. Just drive it like you normally would. You know, let it go through the rev range a little bit um, and then just make it home back safely, obviously. Um, I'm not telling you guys to go out if you don't need to, but this is just a small reminder to help you keep your car 
in healthy shape uh, because two main factors. One, like I mentioned, your battery will drain if it's just sitting there without starting or getting recharged up. And two, um, you don't want your oil to start sludging up um, after a while, um, especially if you use thicker oil for whatever reason. Um, if you have it sitting for too long, it can honestly, again, in a few weeks, I don't think so, but realistically, we don't know how long this situation is gonna go on. And if you're someone that's not considered essential, um, just preventative maintenance run your car a little bit even if it's to go get those essentials even if it means driving out to a slightly further gasoline station to get some fuel and fill up just you know do that to get your car to operating temperature drive it for a little bit let it charge you know let it be lively and uh we'll probably save you some headaches down the road bye guys